Aaron Parry here from Maven Analytics. In this video, we'll be working on a beginner Power BI project to create a Toy Store KPI report. We'll start with connecting and profiling the data, followed by creating a relational data model, adding calculations with DAX, and finally building an interactive report. This is part of the Maven Analytics Guided Project Series, where we introduce self-paced projects for you to work through using tools like Excel, SQL, Power BI, and more. After you've tried the project for yourself, you can watch how our expert instructors tackle the projects as they walk through their solutions step by step. Now, let's dive into the assignment details for this beginner Power BI project. This is going to be a really fun and basic project where you'll get to use your skill set to build a simple interactive report. So here's the situation. You've just been hired as a brand new data analyst for Maven Toys, a toy store chain with multiple store locations in Mexico. Now, to better understand business performance, you've been handed data that contains transactional sales records from January 2022 through September 2023, as well as information about products and store locations. Your goal here is to build a simple, interactive report that the leadership team can use to monitor key business metrics and high-level trends. And for this project, we're going to break things down into four core objectives. The first objective is going to be all about exploring the data using profiling and QA techniques to understand the raw data. After that, you'll follow the data modeling best practices and create a relational data model. The third objective is really all about enhancing the data by adding some calculated measures and fields. And then finally, we'll wrap up and bring it all together and build an interactive report. Now, to access the free Toy Store sales data for this project, head over to the data playground at mavenanalytics.io, search for the Mexico Toy Sales data, and click the download button to download the CSV file. For the remainder of this video, I'll first introduce the project objective in detail and then follow it with my solution walkthrough. Now, I strongly encourage you to try and work through the objectives on your own first, but if you get stuck, feel free to continue watching the video as I walk through my approach. With that, let's roll up our sleeves and dive in. All right, let's get started with our first core objective, which is connect and profile the data and this objective has four separate tasks to complete. Our first task is to connect to the sales, product, store, and calendar CSV files. After that, we'll review the table columns, check for blank or null values, confirm that data types are accurate, and identify our primary and foreign keys. The third task is to explore and profile the data to get an idea of the data that's included. And after this, you should be able to answer questions like how many transactions were recorded, how many stores does Maven Toys operate, and what are the lowest and highest priced products. And then the fourth and final task is to add a new calculated column to the calendar table for start of month and start of week. All right, so with that, let's hop over to Power BI and we'll walk through each of these tasks. All right, so first things first, let's head to the query editor. And I'm going to connect to data from here, go to our CSV. And first we'll bring in our calendar table. All right, we've got a little preview window here, got our date column, click OK. Once this loads, we'll come back up and we'll connect to our next source to bring in our products. And then same deal here, after Power BI processes this, we'll get a little preview window, All right? And product ID, name, category, cost, and price. Looks like product related information. I'll click okay. All right, next source, we'll come up and we will grab our sales data. Sales. And we'll check out the preview here in a moment. All right, so we've got a sale ID, date, a store ID, product ID, and units. So click OK to add this into the query editor. 
And then our last source is our stores table. So connect to stores. Again, store ID, name, city, location, and the date that the store was opened. All right, so that is our first task. Our second task is to review the different table columns, check for any sort of blank or null values, make sure our data types are good, and then identify primary and foreign keys. All right, so let's start from the top here. Take a look at the calendar table, and everything looks good here. Right, we've got our data type is set to a date. We have no error or empty values here. Everything is valid. And because this is a date column in our calendar table, this column will end up being our primary key. Go over to the products table and we've got product ID is an integer. We've got product name, which is text. Product category is also text. And then product cost and product price are both set as currency data types. And again, here we see that this is a full green bar. All entries here are valid. There's no errors or empty values. So again, everything looks good here. And then our product ID column, this is also going to end up being a primary key column. Jump over to the sales table. All right, we've got sale ID as an integer. We have a date. All right, so this is some sort of transaction date when the sale occurred. We have our store ID as an integer, product ID as an integer, and same thing with units here. Again, we've got this full green bar, so we can see that there's no error or empty values. Data types are good. All right, and then because this is the sales table, right, we have multiple transactions on a single date. Our store ID, product ID, these end up becoming foreign keys, right? There's likely multiple instances of each one of these IDs within the sales table. Same thing with the date column. This is a foreign key as well. All right, so last table here, let's check out stores. All right, store ID, integer, store name is a text, city, location, both text values as well and then the date that the store was opened. This is a date value. And again, same story here, got really clean data, so we don't have any error or empty values. Everything is valid. And then for our store ID column, this is also going to be a primary key. All right, so that is our second task. Our third task is to profile the data. And in order to profile the data, we've got some tools that we can use from the view menu. Namely, we have this column quality, column distribution, and then column profiling tools that we can use. All right, so this will show us the percentage of valid error or empty values. It'll give us a quick distribution so we can see things like distinct and unique values. All right, so our store city, we've got 29 distinct, 17 unique values. Right, but for our store ID, we've got 50 distinct and 50 unique. So there's another good indicator there that this is likely some sort of primary key column. So those are some of the different column profiling tools. And what you really want to do here is start to explore the different tables and really understand some of the values. So one of the questions that we were being asked is how many stores does Maven Toys operate? And because our store ID column here is a primary key, this is going to give us the total number of stores that we operate, right? Because this is at the store level, these IDs. So you can see that we have 50 stores. If we click on the store name, so this is gonna give us the same exact count, but instead of being the ID of the store, this is actually giving us the full store name. So we've got 50 stores. Let's go up to our sales table. Here we want to see how many transactions were recorded. And if I do the same thing on and click into the sale ID column, we see that we have a thousand. But I actually know that there's way more than a thousand records within my sales table. And one of the things that you need to keep in mind here is that Power BI only 
provides column profiling based on the top 1,000 rows, but you can update that to the entire data set. So what we'll do is we'll update the profiling to include all of the records within the data set, and then we can get an idea of how many transactions we have within the table. All right, so once we update the column profiling to be based on the entire data set, can actually see that we have 829,262 records within this table. And because we see we have the same distinct and unique values within the column, we can kind of understand that each record within this table constitutes one transaction. Basically, we've got 829,262 transactions that we've recorded. Now, the last piece that we were looking to understand is what are the highest and lowest priced products? So if we head over to the products table and scroll over to our price column, we can use our same column profiling tools here to understand our min and max prices. And there's actually a couple of different ways that you could answer this question. So we can see that our minimum price is $2.99 and our maximum price is $39.99. The other way we could think about this is which actual product is the lowest and which actual product is the highest. So if we come over to the value distribution here, we can see that we actually only have one product that is $2.99. So if we click equals, this is going to apply a filter and we can see that our Play-Doh can is the only product in here that costs $2.99. We remove the filter, click the column again, and then find our $39.99 item. Again, same case here. We've only got one item in the data set at this price. And so if we again apply that filter, we have Lego bricks. And that is the highest price product within the table. All right, so that is our third task for this objective. Make sure we clear this filter out. Now, the fourth task is that we need to add start of month and start of week to the calendar table. So we come to the calendar table. We have our date column selected. If we come to add column and then our date tools. We can add in start of month. And then reselect the date column again. And we want to do start of week. All right, so the columns and data types and everything look good here. And with that, that is going to wrap up the fourth task for this first objective. All right, welcome to the second objective where you'll be creating the relational data model. And this objective has four tasks to complete. Up first, we'll load the tables to the data model and then create relationships from the sales table to the product stores and calendar tables. And then once these connections are made, you'll confirm that the model follows data modeling best practices. So it should take the form of a star schema with one to many relationships between the fact and dimension tables. After that, our third task is to create a date hierarchy containing start of month, start of week, and the date fields. And then to wrap things up, the fourth task is to hide all foreign keys in the sales table from report view. All right, so what we need to do is close and apply. And what this does is this basically takes that transformation work that we did in the query editor, and it creates this query plan and compresses and loads everything into the Power BI data model. So we'll give these tables a moment to load, uh, but once they do, we'll head over to the relationship view, that data model view, and we'll create the data model. Awesome, so that wrapped up, and now that we've got everything loaded, we can head over to the model view, and we can create the relationships between the tables. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit here and I've got my calendar table, products table, I'm gonna move my sales table down underneath here, and then I've got my stores, All right? So because my store, product, and calendar table 
all contained my primary keys. These are gonna be connected down to my sales table. So we're gonna connect date to date. We're gonna connect the product ID. This is our primary key to our product ID in sales. And then from our stores table, we're gonna connect store ID to store ID. Great, so that is our first task. The second task is to confirm that we're using data modeling best practices, like a star schema and our one-to-many relationships from the fact to the dimension tables. So within a star schema, you basically have a central table that kind of stars out right to each lookup table. And we are following that best practice. We do have one to many relationships. You can see that the cardinality is many to one. This talks about it in context of the actual fact table back up to the lookup table. So many to one, same thing here. This is a many to one relationship, many to one relationship. So that's our second task. We basically confirmed that we are following our data modeling best practices and that all of our relationships are following that many to one or one to many cardinality. Our third task is to create a date hierarchy that contains start of month, start of week, and date. So for that, we need to select the calendar table and I wanna right click start of month select create hierarchy. And what this is gonna do is create a little visual area for me in the properties pane that I can define my hierarchy from. So we're starting this from start of month or the base of this is start of month. I wanna add in start of week and then I wanna add in date. So now you can see we have that nice date hierarchy for start of month start of week, and then date, click apply level changes. And then here we can see our date hierarchy is present within the tables view. Awesome, so that is our third task. The fourth task is to hide all of our foreign keys in the sales table from report view. So if we click on the sales table, our foreign keys are things like our date column, so there's a few different ways that we can actually go about hiding these. If you select the actual field, you can click this toggle in the properties pane for is hidden. Once that slides to on or to yes, you'll see that there's this little icon here that says the field or this table is hidden in the report view. So the next field that we wanna hide is gonna be the product ID. So we can actually just click the eyeball icon here. And in essence, this is just a shortcut to do the same exact thing. So we see over here in the properties pane that this field is now hidden from the report view. And we get that same message if we hover over the eyeball. Now the last field is our store ID. This is the foreign key. And if we right click and then select hide in report view from the contextual menu, Again, that same thing is gonna happen. We get the updated icon here. We see that it is hidden. And then we can actually see that our date, product ID, and store ID fields from within the table here are hidden from the report view as well. All right, so with that, that is gonna wrap up the fourth and final task for this second objective. All right, we're cruising right along with this guided project. So for the third objective, you're going to be adding calculated measures and fields to help enhance the model and get the data ready for visualization. Now, our first task is to create new calculated columns in the sales table to pull in cost and price from the products table. Then once those values have been added, we're gonna use them to calculate revenue and profit for each transaction. The second task is to create measures to calculate the count of orders, we'll call that total orders, the sum of revenue, called total revenue, and then the sum of profit, called total profit. 
Now, the third task for this objective is an optional bonus task where I'm challenging you to define new measures to calculate total revenue and profit, but without referencing any of the calculated columns in the sales table. The key here is really just to take your time and to think through all of the steps that need to happen to build out these measures and calculations. Remember, you can always search for help or reference the solution video if you need to. Have fun with these tasks, and I'll see you in the next objective. All right, so for our first task, we're gonna head over to our table view, and we wanna head to the sales table. And we wanna first add new columns to pull in cost and price from our products table. So we'll start with our cost column, and we'll create a new column. We'll call this cost equals, and then for this, we're gonna use the related function. And the related function allows you to retrieve or return a related value from another table. And this works by traversing the relationship and the data model that we just created. And it says, hey, I'm gonna grab anything that's on the one side of this relationship and then bring it back to the many side. And then we wanna bring in cost. So the product cost from our product table. And that's it. Once this runs and updates, we're gonna have the product cost for every transaction within the sales table. And we can follow the same approach for the price. We'll add in a new column. We'll call this price. And again, same thing. We're gonna use the related function and we're gonna grab the product price from the product table. Awesome, so we've pulled in these two columns. The next thing we need to do is create columns for revenue and profit, All right? So our revenue is going to be our price times the number of units. So we'll add a new column and we'll call this revenue. And again, this is the quantity times the price. So we're gonna do the units, sales units times price and we're going to do price from the sales table right so that's our revenue and the profit is very similar but in this case we basically want to say hey take our revenue and then we need to subtract our costs from it so for profit we're going to start off and we're going to say hey give me the revenue from the sales table and I wanna subtract from that my cost times the number of units that we sold, right? So in cases where the units sold weren't one, we wanna make sure we're multiplying the cost times the number of units, same way that we did for revenue here. So we'll enter that in and let's update this to two decimal places. So now we've got our cost, price, revenue, and profit columns all within our sales table. And you can see those calculated columns added in here. So that's our first task. The second task is to now create measures for total orders, total revenue, and total profit. And to do that, let's head over into the report view click on our sales table, and I'm gonna add in a new measure. So our first measure is gonna be for total orders. And our total orders measure is gonna be pretty straightforward. For this, all we wanna do is take the distinct count of the sale ID from our sales table. All right, so if we do sale ID, right, because each record within the table constitutes an individual order. So if we do the distinct count of all of these sale IDs, that'll return us the value. You could also do something like count rows because we also know that all of the values within that column or within that table represent one order. So we'll lock this in, format this by adding a comma. And then to quickly take a look at this, if we add in a card visual and then add in our total orders from the sales table, 
you know, we can see the number of orders that we have here. All right, so let's keep going along. We need to create total revenue and total profit measures as well. So I wanna make sure these stay in the sales table. So we'll select that and then new measure. And I'm gonna call this total revenue. Because we already created the calculated column for this at the individual transaction level, all we need to do is sum the values within that column, right? So the sales revenue column. So again, really straightforward measure here. We'll get total revenue. This will pop up in a moment. Same thing here. Let's actually just drag this out onto the canvas. Again, we get this card that pops up. So $14.44 million in, in total revenue. And then the last measure that we need to create is for total profit. And again, this is gonna be very similar to our total revenue measure where our total profit is going to equal the sum of our profit column from the sales table. So again, the DAX is pretty easy here when you have that column to point to and just say like, hey, sum all of the values within this column. And we'll drag this out to the canvas as well, just to visualize the result real quick. And just over $4 million in total profit. All right, so that is our second task. Our third task here, which is optional, is to create new measures for revenue and profit without referencing the calculated columns that we created in the sales table. So in order to do this, the DAX becomes a little bit trickier, um, but it's still pretty straightforward. So up first, let's create our new revenue measure. Again, we'll come up here and click new measure, and I'm gonna call this revenue, and then in parentheses M, just for measure to differentiate that between the one that we created with the calculated column. And the main difference here is that we basically need to use an iterator function to iterate through every record of the sales table. And then we wanna multiply that by a related product price. So we basically wanna do the same work that we did in this measure that we did with the calculated columns, but we don't wanna to have to reference or create those calculated columns. So for this, we're gonna use a sumx. And the base table that we want to reference is the sales table. And the expression is that we want to basically take the units from the sales table and we want to multiply this by the related column product price, right? And close that off. So basically we're saying, hey, take the number of units that we sold multiply that by the related product price from the price column in the product table, and then return the result. Again, let's drag this out to the canvas. And you can see here, I've got my revenue that we created using the calculated column, and then the revenue using the measure, and they're the exact same. So let's follow this same approach for our total profit measure. And we'll call this total profit. Actually, we'll just call this profit. And this is gonna be our measure. So here, we're gonna use the same sum x. And our base table is our sales table. And our expression is basically revenue minus cost. So we've already defined our revenue measure. So we can actually reference that revenue measure right here we actually want to say, hey, here's our revenue, and we wanna subtract from this the units times the related product cost, right? So what this actually cost us to make. So we've got our sales units multiplied by a related product cost Right? And then basically just close out our parentheses. So we're basically saying, hey, multiply the sales units by the product cost, and then we're gonna subtract that from revenue to get profit. So kind of working inside out in this formula. So we'll lock this in as well. And then currency, we're gonna format this to two decimal places. And now that that is all locked in, add this into the canvas. 
and we'll take a look at what we get. All right, so we've returned that same result, just a little bit over $4 million. And that's gonna wrap up our third bonus task. Now, if you were able to complete this, awesome work. If not, I hope you learned a little bit about this technique and could hopefully deploy this in a project in the future. All right, it's time for the fourth and final objective where we'll really put everything together and create our interactive report. So up first, we're gonna add some KPI card visuals for total orders, total revenue, and total profit for the current month, along with the monthly trend for each metric. And after the KPI cards are completed, we'll add a slicer visual to filter the report page by store location. And then our third task is gonna to be to add a bar chart that shows total orders by product category and a line chart showing total revenue with the date hierarchy on the x-axis. And then once we've got all of these charts built out, the final task will be to assemble the charts into a logical layout and adjust things like formatting and alignment, and then really add your own polish to really finalize the report as you see fit. All right, so first things first here, I really don't need both versions of measure and calculated column. So I am going to delete these calculated column versions and I'm gonna end up using these measure versions just for consistency, All right? So basically what we wanna do here for our first task is to update these to KPI cards, right? For total orders, revenue, and then profit. So we select the visual here we can use the on object formatting and we can update this visual type, right? Right now we have the card selected. We can come down here to KPI card and you'll notice this goes blank. It's because we have to add in a trend axis and for the trend axis, we wanna add in start of month, All right? So now we've got our total orders trended by start of month. We're gonna do the same exact process for these other KPI cards. Come in here, update this to KPI, and then add the start of month to the trend axis. We can update the formatting here in a little bit once we get to the uh, fourth task. And then same deal for our profit. Got KPI, and then trend axis is gonna be start of month. All right, great. So now we are showing our total orders, revenue, and profit by month with the start of month on the trend axis. All right, our second task is to add a store location slicer. So if we come up and select slicer from the visuals and then add a field, we go to stores, select store location, all right, we've got the store location slicer. We can test this out when we click on airport or commercial, downtown. All right, we can see our associated measures changing with the different slicer selections. So everything's looking good there. All right, for our third task, we need to add an embar chart for total orders by product category and a line chart for revenue by date hierarchy. So let's start off with our bar chart first. And we've got our bar chart here. And on the Y axis, we need our product category. And then the X axis is gonna be our orders, total orders measure. And again, we're not gonna worry too much about formatting and sizing and all that stuff. We'll take care of all of those pieces here in a moment. All right, so that's our bar chart. Our last chart that we need to add is a line chart for revenue with the date hierarchy added to it as well. So we'll come up to our visual type, add in a line chart. All right, we've got our line chart. And then on our X axis, we're going to add in our date hierarchy. And our Y axis, we're going to add in our revenue measure. So that is our third task. We've added in all of our different charts and our different report elements. 
And that is going to help us segue into our fourth task, which is to assemble and format this dashboard as you see fit. So I'm going to do a couple of things here to give myself a little bit more room to work with. Collapse the filter pane. Same thing with the formatting pane for right now. We can collapse that. And then the data pane as well. Just want to make sure that I've got enough room to work with everything here. What I'd like to do is we're going to kind of shrink down these KPI cards a little bit. All right, we're going to be adjusting some of these data types as well. But again, just kind of sizing these a little bit, moving them around into location. Again, generally speaking, I like having these KPI cards at the very top. Right When people are looking at a dashboard, they tend to read left to right, top to bottom. So having your kind of key KPIs, those big numbers, stuff like that at the top is generally pretty helpful. I'm actually going to slide this slicer up here too so folks know that they can kind of interact with the visual as they need to. And then, you know, having something like our bar chart over here. And then I'm going to move our line chart over here and kind of align those pieces like that. All right, great. So kind of going through and formatting and cleaning stuff up a little bit. All right, the first thing that I want to do is update this store location title. So I can click in, double click the field, and then basically update this just for this visual. So that isn't going to change the name within the whole data set. It's just going to change it within this visual. Total orders by start of month. Let's see if we can check out something like the title here. And let's shorten this a little bit. We'll just say total orders by month. And I'd like to make sure that this is centered within the KPI visual here. The data formatting looks good here, so I don't really need to make any sorts of updates to my number formatting. What I can do is I can click on this paintbrush and then that'll update any formatting tweaks or options that I've made to any other visuals that I select. So now if I come in here, we can update the title. So this is going to be revenue by month. And then we'll update profit by month as well. But again, using that paintbrush icon, it alleviates that additional step of having to go down and center everything. The last piece that I want to do for both of these KPI cards is I want to update how this number is shown. So if we come to the callout value, so if we come down to display units, had it set to auto, if we click none, this is going to follow the formatting that we have set in the data set. So right now this has the two decimal places here, can actually come back to my profit measure. And now we can update this to zero, right? Once this wraps up, can close out. And now we've got that nice round number here. So 180,445 for the last month of revenue. Same deal with our revenue by month. If we click on this, that's set to auto. Just going to set that to zero so we default to that as well all right perfect so that actually updated this here and again we could do the same process with the call out value set this to none and then we know that that would have updated and removed the k from that all right so these are looking pretty good one of the last things that we could do for these three visuals is if we select them all and then click format the align tools and then we can distribute these just so they're kind of centered with each other. All right, so up next, let's tackle our bar chart. So from the title standpoint, let's just update this to orders by product category. And I want to center that as well, right? So that title looks pretty good to me. On my y-axis, I actually want to remove the title I think it's pretty explanatory that we're looking at categories here. And then similarly on the y on the x axis I'm going to remove the title from here and then I want to update the values to none. 
All right, the last piece here that we could do is let's update the color of the bars. Default is this kind of blue color here. Uh, let's make this a little lighter of a blue. All right, so that, that looks pretty good. And again, what we can do here is we can click the copy button and then update our start of month hierarchy chart here, right? So that kind of updates some of these formatting pieces a little bit. Got some work to do here on the dates, but we'll take care of that. So if we drill up, we get to our revenue by start of month. We've got a nice cleaner date axis right now, so that looks good. So one thing that I'd like to do is update the line type. And what I wanna do is make sure that this is a smooth line instead of linear. So the trend here gets smoothed out a little bit. Also wanna update the color. Again, these blues are pretty similar, so I'm gonna make this more of a navy blue, a little bit of a darker blue, so that stands out a little bit. All right, so the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna actually update the axes values here. All right, see how we're starting at about half a million here? We've got this truncated axis. So if we scroll back up to our Y axis, we have our range values here. And by default, it's set to this auto minimum and auto maximum, which is great because it helps you know scale automatically as you're interacting with other elements in the dashboard. But instead of having this start at a minimum value of auto, it started at zero. So that way we can actually get a true kind of understanding or indication of some of the magnitude of the change here. And then also when we interact with the dashboard and kind of click around, you know, we can still get an understanding of the actual scale. We're starting at zero, but now the upper bound is changing dynamically. All right, and then the last piece here is we'll come through and update our header or our title. So if we scroll back up to our title here, and we're gonna shorten this up a little bit. We've got revenue by month. We'll remove the M and then the start of. And we've got our title updated. All right, so that is our fourth task. And again, there's a bunch of different stuff that you could potentially do here to you know, adjust the formatting and alignment and the polish and all of that stuff. Again, the design is you know really you know, in the eye of the beholder, as they say. So, you know, there's a lot of different options that you could potentially do here. So this project incorporated some basic data transformations, some modeling, we created some measures and calculated columns, and then finally built out a little bit of a dashboard. So with that, we've officially wrapped up our Toy Store KPI report. Congrats on making it all the way through, and I hoped you learned a thing or two. If you've enjoyed this one, you can explore all of our guided projects at mavenanalytics.io, which range in difficulty from basic to advanced and feature tools like Excel, SQL, Power BI, Python, and more. You can also build personalized learning plans, take skills assessments, earn credentials, and preview our entire library of self-paced analytics and data science courses for free. I hope that you had fun with this project. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, learn on.